Well, I want to I wanna share something with you guys. You know, prior to having kids, I was working on a fashion project that I was very passionate about. But once we became parents, you know, a part of me was dealing with the demands of being a new mom and also with the thoughts and the pressure of rushing back to pick up the pieces where I left off. You know, we all go through it. It's a transition after becoming a new mom. And after many nights of 3 a.m. baby feedings and blank stares at the ceiling, um, I realized that what I really wanted in my life and what I really needed in my life was to be able to give our children more of my time. You know, not just my physical time, but emotional time. I needed to be more present and I needed to be less reactive because all of you know when, when we tend to get stressed out and a little bit overwhelmed with things or, or different pressures in our life, we're so easy to react upon things that aren't necessarily so much of a problem. And, you know, I think, I think it just came down to the fact that I wanted to be at the crossroads of our children's lives and not just at the sideline waving here and there. And I remember going through a rough phase, probably when Ava was about three or four months old. It was three or four months after I gave birth. And she was very fussy, and, and she was having a lot of stomach issues. I mean, after all, what, we had a, a one-and-a-half-year-old and a, a three-month-old. Things were, things were hectic. And I was having trouble finding the balance in my life. And I was dealing with the guilt of giving everyone enough attention and also trying to make plans and goals for things that I wanted in my life and in my marriage. So somehow I thought that everything would just magically fall into place or sort itself out. But how many of us know that life doesn't always go as planned or as we hope, right? right. So I can't remember what was exactly going on that day, but it must have been a rough day. We were home in New York, and, and my dad had sent me an envelope to my apartment in New York City. And he had written me a really sweet message. And he had also inserted an excerpt from a book written by, I'm not sure if any of you guys have ever read it, but it was a, a piece printed out from this book written by Nicole Johnson, which was called The Invisible Woman, When Only God Sees. Now, it's too long to read on stage, so I'm just going to read, a, you know, give you the gist of it and read you a few things. But basically, it spoke about a mother who was also feeling invisible. And I think that, you know, anyone who's a mom or a caretaker of children can all relate that some days were just a pair of hands or a crystal ball to ask, you know, where is my laptop? Or you know, a car to order to pick us up at three, or mom, what channel is this channel? You know, where, where it doesn't matter if we're in the shower or sleeping on the couch, we just become a set of hands to do things. And she talks about how she was confused when a friend brought her back a gift from a trip overseas, she was abroad, and she brought her back a book about the great cathedrals of Europe. And she wasn't sure at the moment why she had given her this book, but after, you know, devouring the book and reading the inscription that her friend wrote inside the book, which said, with admiration for the greatness of what you are building when no one else sees. So she discovered four life-changing truths that she could then pattern her work. One, no one can say who built these great cathedrals. We have no record of their names. Two, these builders gave their whole lives for something they would never see finished. Three, they made great sacrifices and expected no credit. And four, the passion of their building was fueled by the faith that the eyes of God saw everything. So she talks about the importance of keeping the right perspective as a great builder. As one of the people who will show up to a job every day that they might never see finished, to work on something that their names would never be on. And she went on to say that the writer mentioned something in the book how 
that there would never be any new cathedrals that would ever be built in our lifetime because there are so few people in this lifetime, this generation, that are willing to sacrifice to that degree. So she finishes the excerpt from the book by saying, as mothers, we are building great cathedrals. We cannot be seen if we're doing it right, and one day, it is very possible that the world will marvel not only at what we have built, but at the beauty that has been added to the world by the sacrifices of invisible mothers. So I had found my why. My why is what I'm building in the walls of my own home. And I think we can both testify to this, that we're both grateful for a company and for a business that allows us to support our family while being able to physically be there and to be present for them. Can anyone else relate? You know? And crazy enough, you know, this story somehow reminds me of this company. Because, in a way, I see this company as the invisible business. You all put a lot of hard work into this, into building this, and you don't always see the results right away. But if you keep pushing through, you will see, you will see those results in the end. It just takes that sacrifice that none of, a lot of people in this day and age are not willing to sacrifice. Just remember, all of you guys are building great cathedrals and you can't see right now what it will become. So I encourage you, I encourage you that if any of you are hanging on by a thread to a job, if you're battling with the guilt or the decision or the juggle, the simple juggle of whether you're a mom or a dad, whatever, whatever your occupation may be, whatever that juggle is that's tearing you from home, this company has given us an opportunity it's given us an opportunity to reach our goals, to build our dreams, and most importantly for us was to be with our family. You know, our, our, our dear friend, Pastor Rich Wilkerson, who just gave birth to his newborn baby a few days ago, um, we were there at church and he said something that stuck with me last week and he said that our jobs have a mission statement but we have no mission statement for our lives. So good, right? Don't let that job that's holding you on by a string be the mission statement of your life. Yeah. <laughs> Find your why. Dwayne said the most important time in your life is when you're born and when you find the reason why you're born. Find your why and let it motivate you. Because that is what matters, that is the purpose, don't lose sight of that. We love you. This is why we're here. You guys fuel us. You give us the drive, the motivation to go forward. We love you. We can't wait to see the rest that comes this year. We truly believe the best is yet to come.